Welcome to the fourth section of our Holy Week Art Reflections. Today we are reflecting on Maundy Thursday. Today we will again look at another artwork while reflecting on the lectionary text for Maundy Thursday and conclude with a meditation by Ian Reid from the book Meditations from the Iona Community. Again, remember to send me an email if you wish to chat or if you want me to put you on the mailing list to receive the links to the videos. My email is in the description of this video. Today's artwork, adding our reflection for Maundy Thursday, is titled Jesus Washing the Feet of Simon Peter by Leonid Grigoroshenko. John chapter 13 verses 1 to 17 and verses 36 to 38. It was now the day before the Passover festival. Jesus knew that the hour had come for him to leave this world and go to the Father. He had always loved those in the world who were his own, and he loved them to the very end. Jesus and his disciples were at supper. The devil had already put into the heart of Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot, the thought of betraying Jesus. Jesus knew that the Father had given him complete power. He knew that he had come from God and was going to God. So he rose from the table, took off his outer garment and tied a towel around his waist. He then poured some water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and dry them with a towel around his waist. He came to Simon Peter who said to him, Are you going to wash my feet, Lord? Jesus answered him, You do not understand now what I am doing, but you will understand later. Peter declared, Never at any time will you wash my feet. If I do not wash your feet, Jesus answered, you will no longer be my disciple. Simon Peter answered, Lord, do not wash only my feet then. Wash my hands and my head too. Jesus said, those who have had a bath are completely clean and do not have to wash themselves except for their feet. All of you are clean, all except one. Jesus already knew who was going to betray him. That is why he said all of you except one are clean. After Jesus had washed their feet, he put his outer garment back on and returned to his place at the table. Do you understand what I have just done for you? he asked. You call me teacher and Lord, and it is right that you do so because that is what I am. I, your Lord and teacher, have just washed your feet. You then should wash one another's feet. I have set an example for you, so that you will do just what I have done for you. I am telling you the truth. Slaves are never greater than their master, and messengers are never greater than the one who sent them. Now that you know this truth, how happy you will be if you put it into practice. And from verse 36 to 38. Where are you going, Lord? Simon Peter asked him. You cannot follow me now where I am going, Jesus said. But later you will follow me. Lord, why can't I follow you now? asked Peter. I am ready to die for you. Jesus answered, Are you really ready to die for me? I am telling you the truth. Before the cock crows, you will say three times that you do not know me. It seems the closer Jesus comes to the cross, the harder it is to find true friends. I always remind myself that up until the resurrection and even after that, Jesus' followers had no idea what was really happening. We understand, we know how the story ends, but his followers must have been perplexed at what Jesus was doing. He, their teacher, their rabbi, was washing their feet. This was work reserved for a servant. As they came closer to Jerusalem, 
They expected him to rise to this messianic figure they had in mind, a political and military figure come to overthrow the yoke of Roman rule and descend to the throne of Israel. Instead, the closer they came to Easter Sunday, the humbler and more servant-like he became, and more and more isolated. As the people saw him become more and more fragile and human, they went back to their lives as if there had been just another disappointment like so many political activists before. Gone were the crowds greeting him with Hosannas. He was now left with a handful of followers who were also finding it hard to stick with him. Even one of his most loyal followers betrays him. The kingdom he came to rule is not one of power, popularity or fame. It is one where the king washes his subjects' feet, where the king is betrayed by them and dies for them. Our reflection from the Iona community today by Ian Reid is titled Confession. Peter was caught unawares the first time. Later he had even less excuse. Each failure makes it easier to fail the next time. What about our failures? Words spoken which are untrue. Sometimes true but unkind. Words which need not have been spoken. Words spoken deliberately which harm and hurt. Words left unspoken. Words of apology left unsaid. Words of apology by others which have not been accepted. Words of encouragement which have not been given. Sick who have not been visited. Hungry who have not been fed. Sinners who have been despised. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, you know us better than we know ourselves. You know our weaknesses and our sins. You know the words spoken and the actions undertaken, which should never have happened. You know also how we have failed to speak or act when we should have done. You know how we have taken pride in our own achievements. We forget that they have been made possible only by your Spirit. Despite all this, you continue to love us. We acknowledge our sins and we accept your forgiveness. Amen.